Ladies, gentlemen, and others, welcome to the Golf Lovers United podcast. I am Ben, Golf Lover UK, and I'm not wearing a hat because there's a little bit of shade to me because I've been in the sun for four days and it was lovely to be away. And I am joined, as always, by the one, the only pro golf critic. How are you, Jay? Doing well. Just got back from Miami. Obviously, you can see my uh, Miami Four Aces hat. Uh, it was a great time there. Um, weather was really, really great the whole uh, whole time I was there. A lot of great press conferences, a lot of great meetings. Uh, always super productive going to a live event. So, uh, yeah, it was a great time. Look, we're going we're gonna to address your live event and we're going to address a few other things about live and the world of golf and golf politics. So I know that you and I have got some strong opinions on where a deal stroke merger might be going and that there are certain people that are now very much on board and i i think that well we don't need that now we can do our masters preview show now and if you and i get bogged down in what tiger thinks what yazir thinks what the media thinks then we will do a three-hour show and we're going to save that for next week when mark is back mark is still very much here everybody we love him he's here his little one is not well I don't know if we could roll any more dice and find any more things for poor old Mark to not be able to attend. But at least two weeks ago when he couldn't attend, he was he was in LA at, at a conference for podcasting and, um, and being the legend that he is in the podcasting game. So he will be back, I promise. So we can do some talk around the Masters, talk around a little bit around just majors in general, just for a couple of minutes in and around it. And I'm going to share a view of someone actually gave me, I thought was really, really interesting on why the PGA Championship is the second best major. And they defended it staunchly on, on Twitter. And I actually, while I don't agree, I really respect and now understand that. And I'm going to talk about that. And I know Jay doesn't feel that way, but it'll be interesting just to share with you their thoughts and why they think that. So let's get into the show. And a tradition like no other is actually going to be a new tradition, which is Jay and I are going to actually do picks. We've stopped doing them for live, haven't we, mate? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, doing picks, like like I said, for live events, like I – it's part of the reason why I stopped doing uh, fantasy. We've already already talked talked about it. I just – I don't like having extra rooting interests on top of my actual rooting interests. So the Masters is a little bit different because I obviously – there's no teams involved, uh, and I've got my favorites, but I can also be a little, little bit more objective. Um, so I think it's a little little bit easier, um, and I think we have a good format to make sure that that we're we're not overlapping each other. So I think that's uh, helpful too. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the same. Um, it's going to be a season long. It's for all four majors, and it's going to be very very simple. We are going to do a snake draft of five players. And this Jay's won the toss this time, so he'll pick first, and I'll pick twice, and Jay'll pick twice for those who don't know what a snake draft is. And we're going to pick five players. You can pick any player you want in that five. There's no limits of anything apart from you must have one player who's 40 or older. That's the only thing. And then for fun at the end, we are going to um, we are going to steal from our good friends over on um, uh, the podcast with uh, Lou Stagner and with um, Greg Greg Chalmers and with Mark, oh, we're going to steal. Out. Hack yeah. it out, yeah. I, I listen to it every, every every week, and I don't know if the name eluded me, but we're going to steal their um, who's not going to win or who's not going to make the cut. So we're going to have we're going to put that one in as well. That's not for the fancy. That's just because Jay and I quite like the negativity of that of picking someone who's definitely going to fail. <laughs> so I, I, I've got two. I got one. I got two players. I was time between Jay's got one that he's been hell bent is just not going to perform. So oh, yeah. I just want to talk Jay about about the majors and about the masters. Yep. You know you and I've had various different conversations about which is your favorite major and like I I can hear the masters, I can hear the open, I can hear either and I I I I pick the open but only just if the open had a few more courses in the roster and got rid of Troon which I think is a really average track and i think everyone's going to see that this year it it just doesn't stand up in my opinion compared to some of the others i think the open could do it itself favors by having two or three more new great courses added to the mix hmm. that's that's i think the weakness of the open at the minute and then the masters its weakness is it's a limited field it's a really limited field it's arguably the easiest major to win just because of the limited field what are your thoughts jay 
Yeah, you know, I, I definitely see those points, but I will say, first of all, I'm definitely going to uh, stand up and uh, and defend Royal Troon. I, I love Troon. I think it's a great, great Lynx course. I'm sorry. I still can remember every single shot that I that I hit there, and that was eight years ago. So that's the, the sign to me of a great course, for sure. That being said, I, w- uh, I would love the Open to add a couple more. Like, I think that it's crazy that they've, they've dropped uh, Turnberry from the rotation. I think Turnberry might be the best uh, course on the road. Uh, the road. I've been there. I've yeah. played it. I think it's awesome. Um, the problem is a lot of these gov- governing bodies, they get a little bit <sighs> – they get distracted by politics and, and stuff like that. And I've, I've heard folks from, uh, from the RNA say, oh, we won't go, go back there because we don't want a particular person uh, not involved um, in the actual golf tournament to be the focus. And it's like, I think you have to look, look past that. But that's kind of a, another story. Like, they need to, to figure that out. Like, the PJ Tour is kind of the same. It's the reason why they went away from Doral's because uh, Donald Trump owns it. Uh, look, Donald Trump is a great um, advocate for for golf. He just is. So um, anyway, I will say that my major ranking probably does uh, depend on the uh, golf courses. So I will say, you know, I've got the Masters one because it's my favorite course probably of the uh, the ones that host majors, especially in the last, you know, 10 years. Um, I'll probably go Open Championship 2, U.S. Open 3, PGA 4. Um, and I understand that the uh, PGA is probably the strongest field of, of the four, but I mean, some of those courses that they host the PGA Championship on are real stinkers. Like, I'm not going to name name names ex- except for Valhalla. I really dislike Valhalla. <laughs> uh, where where uh, they're uh, going this year. Um, I think that, uh, you know, Quail Hollow is like another really average course. Like, I just think they have a lot of really average courses that they go to for the PJ Championship. And I think that the U.S. Open is slightly better. I think that uh, Pinehurst is awesome. Pebble Beach is uh, top notch. Shinnecock, Oakmont, like the PJ Championship can't compare to those. So, um, and I think the open, I just like it a little, little bit more because I, I love Lynx golf and, uh, but between the old course, uh, Troon and, and all the other Lynx, Lynx courses in the rotation, uh, Port Rush is a new one. I really like, like Port Rush. Um, so yeah, all those are really great. So I, I probably have to have to put the, op- uh, the open championship second. I understand it, <clears throat> but um, I I think it's the dot sent on those tracks are bad actually. So what I was saying is this guy actually put up on he said, look, he actually thinks the PGA Championship is the best or second best because of those courses, of the variety of courses, and because it's the hardest to win. He said it's the strongest field. I thought he can't. As you you just said it can't really argue with that. It could be the strongest field. The open. In the open maybe it's got but it's got a lot of qualifiers from other areas which while they yeah. deserve to be there because they've qualified kind of weakens it in some ways yeah but i think i think you're being a little bit harsh on some of those courses because whistling straights is not a dog truck that's a good course yeah it's all but right bolter's roll bolter's roll you know, I, I i can i'm here or there on bolter's roll Quail yeah. Hollow. The fact you don't like Quail Hollow, I, I actually find it really surprising. Knowing what you like about a golf, knowing what you tell me you like about a golf course, you would think that Quail Hollow actually is a course that would fit your eye and fit what you like. Do, do, do with the way you've described what you like in the past, you would think it would. Well, there, there's a few things about. I mean, the other problem with with the PJ Championship is that they they have a lot of courses in the southeast, and uh, look. And Augusta is in the southeast as well, but it's a totally separate, uh, separate entity. Like it doesn't even, it almost doesn't even count. These other courses, like I don't like the uh, grasses. I think they're, you know, there's not a lot of like memorable holes there. It's just like it's kind of unimaginative. Like they're they're just not great courses. Like I mean, look. There are some good ones. Don't get me wrong. Like I know they're going to Olympic Club um, in about twenty twenty eight. I love Olympic Club. Um, it's right here here in the Bay Area. It's one of my favorite courses uh, on the West Coast. Uh, except some of the others, like like I said, Valhalla. Like 
there's a couple holes there that I uh, remember, but it's not that great. Uh, Quail Hollow kind of the same, same thing. Quail Hollow has the, the green mile, like the last, you know, three, four holes that are somewhat memorable. But I just think that, uh, you know, there, there's so many other great courses that, that you could go to. And I think that the U.S. Open is just way better. Like you can't even compare Pebble, Shinnecock, like Oakmont, like that. <laughs> Uh, no, I, Pinehurst, yeah, those four alone, comparing them to any PJ Championship course, like it's not even close. I get that. I, I just think yeah. that it was interesting to see someone go for it and really yeah. go into bat and say how much they love those courses. And what I said is like, I kind of saw his point. PJ Championship still for me is, is in fourth place, but it's interesting to see someone say that. Now, we've got to stop calling it the British Open. That's still getting on my tits <laughs> it's the open championship as it says behind you the open championship yep yeah, that's true um and there we are right now <laughs> let's get on let's get on with picking our our teams and then we'll talk Fair about enough. the masters i think what's going to happen is we're going to talk about the masters naturally by going through these players and he's talking about these players going to talk about live it's going to talk about bj tour so i actually think yeah. we're going to go like a wonderful wonderful mysterious tour of golf so if you're still enjoying us and you're still enjoying our voices and uh, i Jay and I are recording this quite late at night. Bless her, my little girl. We came back from Mallorca. On the, we're on the plane. We just landed, and she back in the UK, and she bursts into tears and set us back about an hour because, and I quote, she can't bear to leave her new best friend. She made friends with these three girls between the age of five and seven while she was away, and we, went to mini, we all went to the mini disco with their parents and all that sort of stuff that you do when you've got kids, like the stuff that when you're yeah, thirty without children, like, I'll never do that, and like you're forty-one and you're like I'm doing it. And they're absolutely, absolutely <laughs> loving it. And she, she cried for like, she'll kill me. In 20 years' time, when she listens to this, she'll kill me. She, Annabelle, is in absolute tears. So that's why Jay and I are recording this later in the UK. But for Jay, it's a great time. Right. Oh, so yeah, perfect you're, timing. You're all still with us. I'm deliriously tired. Right. Let's get, <laughs> let's get into picking our team. Now, Jay, <laughs> you won the toss. So you are going to be able to pick yours yeah. first aren't you so do you want to go for it yeah where some would say that i lost the toss because i was actually secretly trying to get the second pick in this but uh just because <laughs> you know there's so many different ways that you can go with this this first pick uh, i'm gonna be very conservative here and pick someone that i'm i'm not sure if he's gonna win but i know that he's gonna top 5 10 easily john rom so okay. i gotta go go john rom the defending champion um, uh, captain of Le Legion 13, uh, obviously a new joiner to, uh, to live golf th this year. Uh, he's been playing pretty well. Like, yeah, he hasn't won an in individual event, event yet, but he's been in the top 10 every single event. Like he's been playing pretty well. It's just a couple of holes he here and there have sort of taken him out of the, uh, taken him out of the mix. Uh, except he has some, something to prove. Like I hear, so many people in the corrupt golf media sort of just completely downplaying like his <laughs> downplaying his chances this this week and i'm like just totally floored by it so can, can i tell you can i tell you my favorite thing sure T tiger's not been playing for the last two months but he's been practicing really well he can definitely win <laughs> john rom can't win because he's not playing in proper tournaments do they hear <laughs> themselves honestly honestly oh. they, uh, they're such morons. John can't win because he's playing on live. Tiger's had a good warm-up round. He can definitely win. It's it's mind-blowing, simpleton idiocy. Yes. And if you're one of the people in the media that said it and listening to this and don't like it, I don't care. <laughs> to say that Tiger's got a chance when he's had a good practice round, but John hasn't got a good chance... When he's been playing in tournaments, <laughs> is mind blowing levels of being a simpleton. My favorite part about this is they they say how oh we don't know like what what to expect from the live players because they're not playing against the guys on the PJ Tour. I take it the the complete opposite. Like I don't know what the PJ Tour players are going to do against the, these live guys that are honestly some of the best best players in the world that are mostly you know should be the favorites to win this. Because you've you've got so many past champions, so many major championship uh, major championship winners on live, 
that like this is this is it now we get get to see like who's actually the best because there's been a lot of talk about scotty shuffler yes he is the best player on the pj tour for sure i can't say that he's the best player in the world because he hasn't played against rom and wako and dj and bryson and brooks and cam smith like all those those guys he hasn't beat in a very long time so i want to see what he he does against these guys because obviously he doesn't have a ton of competition on the pj tour at this point no one's really stepped up their their game so i want to see what scotty scheffler does and that's the reason why i didn't pick him number one either so well, let, i got let's wrong see, first. let's see what the next big and and so people know how we're going to score it's really simple we are going to take their the total position. So let's say that Jay picks, let's read off four names, Scotty, Rory, John Rahm, and Xander, and they finish one, two, two, and four. His score will be their positions added together. Whoever's got the lowest score wins that event. Okay? So we've got to pick an over 40. So I'm coming straight out of the gate and picking Sergio. I'm thinking Sergio is my over 40 because you've got to pick a 40 year old out the gate yeah. early doors. No, you can take, you can take your pick from the rest of them. And just so you know, Charles Schwartz and DJ don't turn 40 until July and August respectively. So you <laughs> can know. go stuff yourself. I, I, just double, <laughs> I just double checked. <laughs> I know. I was, I was trying to catch you on a technicality. I was going to say Sergio is going to be my over 40, but uh, I'll let you ha- have the one. It's fine. I, well, uh, no, he's my over 40. I've got him in. I've, I've got yeah, him yeah. done. <laughs> and then who am I going to pick got another now? One too. Yeah, my brain says to me I should be picking Scotty Scheffler, but my heart says to me I'm going for Brooks Kepka. Mm. He yeah, is my in pick. my team, so that is my two. It's back over to you on the snake draft. Two from you. Oh, and it's really simple with Sergio. Apart from a few duff putts and on the set on the back nine on day two of, of Live Miami. Sergio was was on fire, driving it bri- brilliantly, really, oh, really well. Great. He's playing really well right now. And Brooks, 100%. I I don't think people quite understand how Brooks how Brooks prepares. Now, I'm not saying Brooks didn't want to win, and Brooks didn't care about playing in Miami. I'm not saying that, but if you look what Brooks was doing, it felt to me as an observer. Brooks was very much just trying to dial elements of his game and play well and work on what he needed to work on. Yep. And I, I feel that if you, there's a couple others I felt were doing that, and you've seen that before, and you yep. saw that in the PGA in, in the te- Valero, Texas. There are a lot of PGA Tour players I felt were actually just trying to work on their game and get things going. Yes, they wanted to win. Yes, they wanted to play well. But there was some focus given to just trying to work on certain things. So I think think Brooks and Sergio are my two picks so far. Jay, who are you going for your next two? I will say I'm a little – I agree with you on on Brooks. I think he's going to be a factor. I am a little bit concerned, though, that he just – change putters um although yeah. sometimes when you change putters it, it can be the best thing in the world phil changed putters and had his Maybe highest Scotty changed scotty scheffler changed putters too so i totally understand uh you know changing equip, equipment uh, all that is is uh, uh it's just a little bit it throws a little wrench into it so we'll have to see okay. how play it plays out but yeah i had to get my over 40s in early I had to get my over yeah. 40s in early because if I didn't get my over 40s and you were going to sneak up the outside. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so I've got two uh, two picks. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, one guy who, to me, you there is an argument to be made that he has been the best player in the world so far this year, um, and that's Joaquin Neiman. Joaquin Neiman, I've already gone on the record to say – I'm guaranteeing that that he's finishing in the top 10. He's going to be invited back next year. Um, All you have to do is finish top 12 to get the invite back. Uh, I just think that he's super confident. I've never seen him this confident uh, (laughs) before, especially coming into a a major. If you look at his trajectory um, in the Masters specifically, he has been just every year he's been accumulating more information, more information. Last year, he had his best finish. He was tied 16th. Uh, and he should have really finished top 10, but he made a triple on the 11th hole uh, on Sunday. That that kind of knocked <laughs> knocked him back, unfortunately. But uh, And luckily, he got invited back anyway, so it's fine. But uh, So 
uh, Waco is my uh, first uh, pick in this uh, particular segment. Second guy, I, I can't believe he's still available. Um, I'm going to go him. ahead. I'm going to go ahead and pick Scotty Scheffler. Uh, after look, everything I've already, you said about him, after everything you said about everything him, everything I've said star, about him, not yes. being a good golfer. Okay, all right, you take him. Look, I don't think Scotty Scheffler is going to win. I really don't. <laughs> However. I think that there's a very high probability that he finishes in the top 10 to 15 just because his ball striking has been on a very, very high level this year. He's, he's a great chipper. They call you and it seems like it's just happening now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, look, I, uh, I don't have, like I said, I don't have a lot of confidence he's going to win. However, we have to sort of uh, pick guys that, that we think are going to have high finishes. So, uh, so yeah, those those are my two. Um, I've got Waco, and then I've got Scotty Shuffler. No. A lot of good names still left on the board. Too. Yeah, mate, I'm taking Rory McIlroy. We talk mm. about top, talking about top five finish. No one back, no one backdoors a top five like our boy Rory. And <laughs> and my God, did that trigger a few people? That Rory, <laughs> that Rory McIlroy track. <laughs> Firstly. If you if you spend your time tracking another grown man's sporting ability, that's that's a weird thing to do. But like jumping to his defence, and like when I replied with, "You do realise not actually criticising him," it's just like I don't I don't understand how butthurt these people get about. They really do. It's like, like he got a back. He didn't. He wasn't in. Oh, I just I don't get it. Yeah. The point being, <laughs> and the point I was trying to make is Rory getting another backdoor top five is going to yeah. shorten his odds, which it did do for the Masters because he yeah. ended up getting a top three. Look, yeah. so I've gone Rory McIlroy. I'm going to go on the line here. Look, I actually think Rory could win it. Not just because really? he's one of the best golfers in the world. Yeah. I think that <laughs> actually what's happened for Rory in the last three and a half months is all the emotional shit's gone away. Mm hmm. He's made his peace with his friend, a lot of his old friends. He's tried to apologize publicly to a few of them. He's got some work left to do behind closed doors, as you and I know, with certain players. Yep. And he's got a lot of work to do with some players, but he's made his position clear. He's very much a fan of Yazir and PIF. We know that. We know that yes. he's been instrumental in getting those conversations going. If we're led to believe what we're led to believe is actually, there might now be a resurgence in a relationship between tiger and rory because there's now a coming together in alignment of understanding the pif and what the options are i think rory's actually in a better mental place than he ever has been he's doing less talking he's playing more golf and i like it and i've, I've never seen him i've never seen less hype for rory coming into a, an, an orga, a, a, a masters i've never seen less hype and he's still second favorite yeah yeah like i've said um uh, and i've actually uh I agree with everything you said there. I think that he's uh, setting himself up for a pretty good major season. And I think the next couple of years is going to, going to be a factor. And I do think he's going to win a major at some point in the next three years. Uh, I'm just not sure if the masters is the one for him to win. So that's, that's the reason why I wouldn't, wouldn't pick him uh, uh, to win this or pick him for my, my team. But I, I do think Rory's going to have a good finish. Like I, I know last year he was under a lot of pressure. He was on a lot of stress. He missed, missed the cut. Um, I think that he has learned some, something from that. Um, and I think it's going to be a really interesting, uh, I think it's going to be an interesting Matt <laughs> masses for him. And shout out to, uh, to Rory tracker too. We've had it out a few times and I think we have found some sort of balance. He's still a bit of a, a live hater. Um, and I'm not as much of a Rory hater as I was. So we're, we're trying to trying to move move forward. Uh, a yeah, bit. I think I think with Rory Tracker, like bless him, like a comment concerning Rory and isn't necessarily a dig at Rory, and also he's not his personal bodyguard to have to defend him anyway. It's such a weird thing. But I I, I got on record. There there are plenty of podcasts. The thing is, I like Rory. I think he's a fantastic golfer. I think he's one of the greatest golfers of all time. I actually think that had he not have had such a 
if he just concentrate, not concentrate on playing golf, that's not the right word. If, if he had not had some of the trappings of what happened over the last 10 years with sort of some of the fame and, and starting to overthink things, when he was a free and loose, wonderful golfer, he just did amazing things. As he got more and more famous, he, he maybe put pressure on himself. I think, I think Rory could genuinely, if he hadn't got eaten up by some of that pressure, I think he could genuinely have another four or five majors under his, under his belt. He's, he's, that, he's that good. He is, he that, is good. that good. Yeah. Yeah. No. He uh, like he he should definitely be at like probably six by by now minimum. Uh, yeah. So you, you yeah, because he's definitely you look been who competed close. against the last ten years. He look who he yeah. competed against. Really, multiple major winners. He really is just about Brooks. Yeah. He should have won that that U.S. Yeah. Open at LACC last last year. Like there was just no. No excuse for for that that one. Like he, it was right there for him to grab, and uh, yeah, he didn't get it get it done. So you know, so look, I picked Rory, and then my, my my third, my fourth pick, or my third in that, my second in this in this tranche. I can't I can't look past the Dishambino. It's a par sixty eight, mm. Tim. Yep. I've got to pick him. I've got to pick him. I, I fair. I part of me really. I don't I don't know who I want to win a major more this year. I think I, I want I want live players to win a few of them because I want and I want them to be new players and I want these new players to have, a, have their have their major access locked up. But I really I really want to see Bryson just get that. Well, all he's yeah. doing for golf and, and you and I again, and not, it's not for the show, but I know what he's doing with impossible purchasing of not just one but potentially two golf courses. What he's going to do for local areas and jobs and golf courses that need bailing out. He might be just one of the best human beings to be part of golf and helping golf ever. And I just yes. love to see him get another major and I love to see him get the Masters. Oh. He's the person that I'm probably rooting for most in his Masters, even though he's not on my uh, team. And and you picking him uh, makes my next two two picks really, really easy. Um, except I, I will say people need to uh, put a pin in this conversation about Bryson. Bryson has... I spent a lot of time with uh with his camp in miami um, and i already knew about about some of the stuff already but he's got just some like amazing amazing uh plans to just make golf more accessible um and to make it more affordable especially for kids yeah and again i asked him a question at the uh, press conference uh in miami and and his big thing is and i know people hate this phrase but growing the game um he he wants to expand the number of players playing golf in the world from a hundred million to 150 million. Um, and I think it's reasonable. I think it's, I think it's doable knowing everything that he has planned. I think he's going to play a huge role in it. And um, I really hate like the criticism that he gets because um, I want to be able to help t uh, him tell this story over the, uh, the next couple of few years because I really do think there's there's a lot of game changing stuff going on behind the scenes with Bryson. He um I've said about it before, and anyone listening to this knows this or first time coming to it. If it was first time listening, Jay and I are very, very lucky. We do a lot of a lot of access through Live and a lot of access through other golfers. We met a lot of people and, and I and I spent time with Bryson and I spent I spent one on one time over two events. I've probably spent ninety minutes talking to him. Like mm -hmm. off the record, nothing recorded, and just chatting about golf. His love and respect of golf is unbelievable. It's, it's just it, it, he, my friends and my wife think I'm obsessed with golf. I'm a one out of ten compared to Bryson, and I am obsessed. <laughs> like <laughs> I know <laughs> the only person that's anywhere near as obsessed as him is, is, is Yazir. <laughs> like like yeah, it's, right. it's unbelievable. <laughs> so it's true. And it's interesting that the people Bryson keeps close to him have, have in his camp, and actually he's very close to Greg Norman. He's very close to yep. Yazir. And I think yep. what's interesting in being so close to Greg is obviously Greg's designed lots of courses across the world and had lots of developments around the world. I actually think that you will be... If you said to me in 2030 that Bryson owned or part owned 25 courses around the world... With big youth projects, drawing on local schools, I wouldn't be surprised for a second. Yep. Not at all. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't think he cares. I think he talks about his money, his generational money. He's got locked up. 
I think everything else he earns from now on, he's just going to throw into making golf bigger and providing opportunities for young people. Anyway, I could go on yeah. forever. Let's stop yeah. that. What are your last two picks? <laughs> so your your pick makes my uh, last two picks pretty easy. Uh, except honestly, there's a lot of ways I could go. There's a lot of great players still left left on the board. I mean, uh, uh, Victor Hovland's on the board. Xander Shoffley, Patrick Reed, uh, Cam Smith, Spieth, JT, like. <laughs> A tiger, there's a lot of great, great players. I'm not great, picking any of them. Great, you said great players to mention Justin Thomas. <laughs> Look, JT, people, uh, JT get, gets a lot of flack. Players. I'm a believer in JT. I don't care what anybody says. I Pick still him. think that he. No, I'm not picking him, though. Don't, no, you're not, um, don't, don't believe that much, no, do you? No, no. <laughs> yeah. No, so uh, for my, my final two, uh, two picks, I'm going DJ. Uh, from our my first pick, and I know he's not over forty, so I got to pick one more. There's one more name left left on the board. I have faith in uh, this particular player. He's one of the great Masters champions ever. He's got three wins. He's got twelve top fives. He's got sixteen top tens. The great Phil Mickelson. I believe in him. I know he had a rough week last week at Doral. There's something about being on the grounds at Augusta National. He is, I know somebody in my tweets called him the the Oppenheimer of golf because he just <laughs> understands how to get it done around there. And he just has this mind that nobody else has. So I think that he is, he's going to find it again at Augusta. I think he's going to have a high finish. I don't think he's necessarily going to win I know that he wants to top top five though, because he's currently tied second all time in top fives with Tiger Woods at 12. He wants to elevate himself over Tiger, get to second right, right behind Jack who has 15. So, and I could certainly see a world where Phil uh, uh, has more than Jack at some point. So, you know, we'll have to see. Well, so DJ Phil, those are my last two picks. So I'm left with, I, I would, do you know what's really weird? I've got of the six people I put down, I've got five of them. Mm. I was ne- I knew I knew I wasn't going to get Ram and Scheffler and Neiman, mm-hmm. and I so I just thought to myself, I'll get maybe get one of them. So I put those as a three together with the way the snake draft was going to work. So I always knew with the over 40, I was going to, I was going to pick Sergio up front because I wanted Sergio as my over 40. So I always knew because of my tactics, I was only going to get ever get one of Ram, Neiman, and Scheffler. It's a good thing you picked him early because I I definitely had Serge, Sergio high up on my board. So it's a smart strategy. Yeah. It's not it's not my first road. It's draft day, draft day the film, one of the greatest films ever. It's trending back in the UK. Like I know Netflix Ooh. in the UK and Netflix over there is slightly different. It's back in the top yeah. ten on Netflix in the UK. I love that film. Oh, really? It is religion is religion to me. On um the day yeah. before the draft day before the NFL draft, I will be watching that. Okay. I will be watching it. It's one of the best films. Right. Yeah. Now, who am I gonna pick? I had Xander Hideki. No way am I picking Jordan Spieth. Aberg, Fitzpatrick, um, Wyndham Clark. I looked at Wyndham Clark as my option. I looked at him. I looked at him strongly. I just don't like him. I find him quite... <laughs> I, I don't like him. I find him an unlikable golfer. I don't mean as a person. Huh? I mean, as a golfer, like the tamping down the back of the ball all the time. I find mm. that. Like walking, walking around going, oh, where can I take my drop? Where can I take my drop? Oh, where I've trampled down for three minutes. Oh, that's a pro- like, I, I just dislike that. Fair. I'm going Hideki. It was, Ooh. it was my, for me. I just think okay. if you have a look at his results recently on the PGA Tour, Hideki's been playing better and better. He's driving it really well, and he's injury free. Hideki injury free and driving the ball well. He is a top what? Top ten iron player in the world. Yeah, I'd say top ten for sure. He knows, Maybe top five, he, knows yeah. he knows Augusta. He's one at Augusta. He is one of those odd people that the faster and harder the greens are, harder not as in firmness, harder as in difficulty, he actually yeah. puts better when it's really tough. And I just think yeah. he rounds out my team of five. Now, okay. let's go with, we've got, we've got two subjects to discuss. One subject to discuss very quickly at the end, but we need to go with the 
the two players that are not going to make the cut. Sorry, not going to win. Not going to win. Right. Not going to win. And I'm going to argue that mine isn't also isn't going to make the cut. Okay. And Fair it's enough. going to surprise people. But there we go. <laughs> so for my first pick, I'll go ahead and and, uh, and lead it off, and then I'll let you pick one, and then I'll I'll pick my last one. Um, this is a, a guy that's look. This guy's been had a lot of hype the last year. He turned professional last year. I've got people in my DM saying that he's the next coming. Like this is the guy. I'm not sold on this guy at all. He's playing in his first major championship in the masters he is now a top 10 player in the owgr that tells you how corrupt that system is ludwig oberg i know there's a lot of people that that believe in him lou stagner i know for one masters burner is another one those two guys have a man crush on ludwig um eps, tron carter for no laying up like all of these guys have man crushes on Ludwig. I'm not sold on him playing well in the masters just yet. It's very rare. He won on the PJ tour last year, but it was a very easy course. It was a very easy setup. I have a theory that he does not particularly play that great on setups that are tougher, that are firm and fast that, that have, you know, hard greens. And it seems like Augusta at some point this weekend is going to play firm and fast. They're getting a little bit of rain on uh, Thursday, so that might soften up a little bit, and that might so that that might mean like the first couple rounds he, he plays a little bit better. Uh, but when the weekend comes, he's going downhill. He's certainly not winning this. I could see him missing the cut. I think he'll probably make the cut, except he's definitely not winning. And I see a lot of people picking him right now, which is crazy. So Ludwig, you're not winning. I need to see more from him. If I'm going to call him a top 10 player in the world, he's not there. He's not, I wouldn't even say he's top 20, maybe not even top 25. Um, he's top 50, I'd, I'd say. Um, except, yeah, Ludwig, sorry, not happening. I um, I think higher than you do. I think there is a lot of hype. I mean, there's a big benefit he's had for his PJ Tour career by obviously all the players going to live. Yep. The fact he's ninth favorite in the betting is absolutely mental. Crazy. Crazy. I, look, I, I, I think he's a good player. I do think he, I don't know, I don't know anyone's a next coming. And um, we've had lots of next, we've had more next comings than I can shake a stick at. Um, <laughs> I think he, if you said to me, what does his career, what does his career look like in the next, uh, when he retires, make one major, a couple of top fives, a good Ryder Cup player, top five in the world over a period of six or seven years. He, I can easily see that. He, he's maybe, but uh, that that would be a fantastic career. People talk he, about those top accolades I've spoken about like that's normal. Yeah. Oh yeah, he can win three or four majors. Shut <laughs> up! Like he could do, and he is a great player, and he and he could do. But let's stop oh, he's talking talented. about. Let's stop talking about people winning. Three or four majors, as if it's a normal thing. There are no. players like Lee Westwood and Colin Montgomery, who are unbelievable golfers that spent time at World Number One, that won Order of Merits year after year after year. What did what did Lee do? Did Lee do sixty two weeks? Was it? No, no did no, a lot. Lee, he was at number one for a long, long time. I can't remember been, how. Might long, have been but... thirty six. I think it's thirty six. Okay. Thirty six okay. weeks. At world number one, and never, and never won a major. McDonald, McDonald, a dozen or so weeks at world number one, never won a major. We've got to stop talking about people winning majors like it's a piece of piss. It really yeah. isn't. It really, really isn't. Look, my I player that's not going to, not going to do anything and not going to make the cut, and it pains me to say it because. If there's any player in the world I am more like, uh, you'll never find one, is Jordan Spieth. Mm. Like, I, I love, my game is very Spieth-like in the sense I can drive off the face of the planet and I, my wedge will bail me out time and time after again. But I just, I don't know why, I think there's been a lot of hype around Jordan and he's a great player, but I'm just not feeling it this week. I'm just not sure. feeling Jordan Spieth. And if he misses the cut, I wouldn't be surprised. And yeah. I know 
I don't, oh, the PJ Tour live stuff drives me mad and people listening, people watching this are going mad at me, rubbing my face and I'm just so perplexed. <laughs> the fact that <clears throat> Jordan Spieth in betting is shorter than Brooks Kepka, Neiman, Bryson, Matt Fitt. He, he's much lower in the bet than betting than Wyndham Clark. For me, really? if you said one per, one person's got to play for your life today, Wyndham Clark, match play, Wyndham Clark versus Jordan Spieth, who are you taking? Like, I would never well, be, I, or even or a I stroke play Wyndham. match, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's a fair fair point, but I I will say Jordan Spieth at Augusta National does have some magic. I won't yeah, call I, him I, Phil, I, but he's he does have some of that. Same magic where no matter where how he's he's playing, he turns up. No, but Jordan, Jordan's twenty six to one in the bet, and Wyndham Clark's forty eight. For those of you wondering, where I get my prices from. It's the Betfair Exchange. Betfair Exchange yeah. is a slightly different betting method in the UK. I, I don't yeah. think you guys have a trading book in the same way in the US as we do here. Probably you, not. You trade against other traders in the way you bet, rather oh. than going to a bookie. So um, Bryson, Bryson at forty two, Wyndham at forty eight, and Jordan's at twenty six. Like. Mm, Oh, yeah. just whacking Neiman's at thirty-two to one. Matt Fitzpatrick's <laughs> at forty-two to one. Matt's not a the best, not a bad season, but for Jordan to be that much, I love Jordan. I just don't see it. And if you miss, if you, if you miss the cut, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, fair points. I got to give a shout out uh, to Mrs. Pro Golf Critic. She gave me her pick to win. Um, there might be a divorce coming by her say, saying this, but uh, <laughs> she really likes Matt Fitzpatrick to, to win. She just has a feeling about him, and she she's like, I I think Fitzpatrick. It's Revenge of the Nerds. She 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 likes him, but she, he's definitely on the nerdy side, and, and she kind of that appeals to her. So uh, uh, and she she liked his story on full swing. So uh, Fitzpatrick, uh, uh, what forty some, something to one? Bryson at forty two to one. It's like a Steal! I oh, would, mate, I got so much sorry, money on him when he was, at, he was at he was at fifty eight to one at one point. <laughs> oh my god! It wouldn't shock me at all if Bryce if Bryson wins this. I think that that would be a great thing for the professional game. I think it would be awesome for golf. So, so my last yeah. two they're not picks are just they never value bet, and I, I love a bit of value. I'm, I got I got five pound on Tyrrell and five pound on Brian Harmon, both at ninety five to one. Brian Harmon at 95 to 1. He's been playing really good golf all year on the PGA Tour. He is a grinder. He is a good putter. Like, there's very few things that you need to be more at Augusta than put it in the middle of the fairway and putt really well. And Brian Harmon's one of those players who's played better later in his career. I'm not saying he's going to win, but when, if he has a good first round and that shortens to from 95 to 28, I'll be trading out of that for some profit. I see a lot of Zach Johnson in uh, uh, Brian Harmon, so I could certainly see I could certainly see that. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't Don't ever say anything. that about anyone. No one, no one's a coward like Zach Johnson. <laughs> a coward who did what he was told and threw away his chance of success to keep a few guys in suits happy, who are now going to do a deal anyway. Pathetic. <laughs> Look, no one's been heart harder on Zach on Zach Johnson than, than me, but look, I got to give him credit. He does have two majors and they're probably the two that you would want to win, win most the masters yeah. and the op open at St. Andrews. So, you know, yeah. got to give him a little, a little, right. Credit. Let's, let's move on. We've done our picks okay. um, very quickly. Just to review them. I have gone for Brooks Kepka, Rory McIlroy, Bryson DeChambeau, Hideki Matsuyama and Sergio as yep. my over 40. And Jay has gone for John Rahm, Joaquin Neiman, Scotty Scheffler, DJ and lefty. Yep. And Jay has picked Ludwig Oberg as his player to flame out, not yeah. win and potentially miss, definitely not going to win and potentially going to miss the cut. And I've gone for Jordan yeah. Spieth. And yeah. those aren't, those last two picks aren't part of any competition. They're just, we want to be saying these yeah. things because we're cruel. I've got one more name that's definitely not going to win that I want to get this in. Uh, don't even though. Gooch. Don't say Gooch. <laughs> don't, don't stoke that. <laughs> no, Gooch need, needs to be here. I don't want to. <laughs> Don't get me started on the corrupt <laughs> corrupt world golf rankings. I'm I'm not not going to go there. Um, the one guy, look, he has come around, and I've already said that he's probably going to win a major the next three years. But this is not the one I'm guaranteeing it, and that's Rory McIlroy. He's not winning this this one. I think he's going to have a decent showing. Like I said, he is not winning this yet. He's not quite where he needs to be mentally. 
Um, I think this is going to be an important year for him to sort of learn, sort of take what he's, uh, the strategy that he's had coming in, into this. And I heard him in his press conference today talking about his preparation and, and like what he thinks he, he needs to do to to win the Masters. And I'm like, yeah, the first thing he needs to do is go to live golf because being at live is going to give him the right preparation to actually do well in the masters. It's going to take a lot of pressure off of him. I think that's the final step that he needs to do to win this tournament. So we'll have to see how that plays out over the next year. I just put 10 pound each way on Sergio Garcia at 145 to one. So I just make nice that comes in when it top eight places. It. Right. I can see it. What I want to say is that, um, the Masters, have they done it perfectly? I, mean, I don't want to talk very quickly. The media don't do my head in with this. Rory can't. Um, Tiger can win. He's been practicing really well. Ram can't win. And then that bloke, what was his name? I slipped my mind. Oh, Ram, Ram did like, is it Baton, Batoon? I can't remember what his name is now. I can't, oh, God, brain got blank. And one of the four talking heads sat around the fire outside with, with Eamon. You know, it just, just doesn't work. That's something that made me spoil, spoil my piss so much. Oh, and, uh, and... Uh, Nota Begay? That's it, yeah. Johnson Wagner? No, 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 no yeah, yeah, yeah. That, oh, that no, guy. yeah. Tiger's <clears throat> best friend. Yeah, yeah. Sorry? Tiger's best friend. Yeah, so um, Ram had just done a 15-minute really powerful speech about what he's doing, why he's doing it, how he feels. And then the guy spent five minutes basically saying, yeah, but does he really mean that? Like, I know. It's, it's so, so disrespectful. It's so disrespectful. He's and like, if there's any, if there's any golfer in the world that's going to tell you exactly what they think and not care how you take it outside of Brooks Koepka is John Rahm. Yeah. And just to sit there and go, oh no, he doesn't really mean this. I think he, oh mate, just shut up. Stupid. Like people wonder, people wonder why fewer and fewer people take these people seriously. If a man stands there, Colin Coward, I quote him all the time. Colin Coward, I love Colin Coward. And he's got a line I love. When people show you and tell you who they are, believe them. Believe them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. John Rahm told you. Yeah. Believe him. You know, (laughs) these guys, I've got huge criticisms of Golf Channel here in the US. Um, I've I've kind of gone on ad ad nauseum about about them, but like these these guys are, are just totally oblivious to what, what's going on at live. They're not paying attention to the, the golf event. Look, your job is to cover golf and you don't know what's going on in the, the, <laughs> the league now that you could argue has the most amount of uh, talent out of any of the leagues in, in the world. So that's on them that they're not educated enough to sort of know this. So either they're, they actually are educated and they're pushing this PJ tour propaganda or they're being completely neglectful and not paying any, any attention. Um, either way, it's a, it's a load of crap. Um, I hate it. I hate the stuff that's going on with golf channel. I need them to put some respect on the live players names. I need them to put some respect on live golf in general, because it's stuff like that. This is that corrupt golf media crap that I keep talking about. They're keep pushing this, propaganda that's not accurate like it's not fair it's terrible so it's like they need to get their act together uh, i'm not going to go into de- detail on it uh on it now i want to see how the rest of the week week plays out there but brandel nota begay Eamon lynch johnson wagner even Rich brad Lerner, faxon, all those guys even brad faxon oh I faxon love, too I, I love brad faxon but for brad faxon like and um, full credit to Keith Hirschland for bringing this up and, and, and putting it out there. For Brad Fax and say, well, we just don't know anyone's playing because they don't have any data over at Live. What? Why say Stupid. it? He knows it. He knows. Right. We know. We know players that work with him and have worked with him. We know that he knows it's not true. So he knows there is data and he knows there's stats on Live. So he was deliberately misrepresenting the truth and misleading people. Brad Faxon is a legend of the game. I absolutely love him. For Brad to do that, I was really disappointed. He knows there are stats. It's utter lies to say he didn't know that. And I'm really disappointed in a man that actually, if you said to me, who are the top 10 pundits in golf that you love listening to and you trust what they say, Fax is up there. Fax is in it. And I was really disappointed he did that. Same. Same. Um, I, I do have to get, give a shout out. One of the 
uh, people on there. Actually, probably the the voice of, of reason on Golf Channel. I was watching earlier today. Uh, Paige Mc- McKenzie. Oh, brilliant. Paige McKenzie was making some great points about how being a lib may be an advantage where. You know, they're not only playing under pressure for the individual, but there's also this additional team element. And she knows she was a very high level college player, very passionate about college golf. She knows how this actually works and is not exactly subject to the same propaganda that some of the other guys are. So, like, I I like the the fact that she was giving uh, a dissenting opinion. I need to see more of that from people in the golf media. I think this is how we can actually elevate the sport a little bit more. Because it's it's been an echo chamber this whole time, and we we need to start breaking this up. Uh, just just like I told Dan Rappaport when I was in Miami, we we had a good chat for for about twenty twenty five minutes. I was able to get my uh, points across, even though he was way more combative uh, <laughs> than I thought he was going to be initially. But um, I think once he he realized I, I wasn't there to do him any any harm, that he he softened a little bit and he understood my points and I can already see that he's uh, maybe softening his takes a little bit, which is a very, very important thing. And it's something that I want to do with like everybody in the media. So uh, shout out to, uh, to Dan Rappaport, uh, shout out to Paige McKenzie. Uh, and I want to see more people like that in the golf media moving forward. I completely agree and I will close it with this. I was just trying to find the the name and I've now found it. Um, Three Masters players, three live players give Masters interviews. Phil was invited and politely declined. Three, four live players in the featured groups. Yeah, that that was a good sign. It's a good sign. Well, I'm still wondering why they are using old photos on the Masters app. Oh. rather than new photos like they use for everyone else. It, it almost yeah. feels like by not putting current photos, it gets talked about more. Just put the current photos yeah. up. Yeah. By not putting the current <laughs> photos up, it just looks really bizarre. Look, we're going to move on. Yeah. We've, got to, we've got to end the show. I've got to go to bed. You've got to yeah. have lunch or something. What time is it there? <laughs> it's only three, uh, three o'clock here Pacific. Oh, so, so you're, um, you're just about ready for second lunch, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't had had lunch lunch yet. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Golf Critics, uh, she's actually make, making some now. So uh, <laughs> definitely gonna gonna hit hit that up. I do want to give a quick shout out uh, to Yasser and some of the other live leadership. It does sound like they have been invited to attend the Masters <laughs> over, over the weekend. I'm trying to get some more information seeing what's actually go- going on, see if they're actually going to attend. I think that's a huge olive branch. I'm really excited to see that. I know we've got some more potential announcements coming here in the next week or two. I'm really eager to see how things are going to come together with, with this, what I'm calling phase one of this collaboration between the golf establishment and live and the PIF. Something everybody needs to, to keep an eye on moving forward. There are things changing behind the scenes Things have changed a lot the last month. I think it's really exciting times, and I'm really excited to see how things pan out the next few weeks. Look, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Jay, for being yourself, and to Mark for all the support he's given us and gives us. We have some exciting news that hopefully will be coming out in the next two or three weeks around uh, the Golf Lovers United um, media group, as we uh, I jokingly refer to us. Um have a go, and by the way, go over to our YouTube channel. You will see my video and interview with Bubba Watson. It's fantastic. And Jay's interviews and questions from the press press conferences at Live Miami. Ladies and gentlemen, we love you all. Have a fantastic Masters. Enjoy it. A tradition like no other will be people talking about who's the greatest goal forever. Is it Tiger or is it Jack Nicholas? And they will show the putter running. <laughs> Jack and his putter, and they'll show the ball gut, the Nike tick swoosh falling in the hole. And all I would say is the reason I love the Masters so, so much is that from Sunday onwards, I can get 18 holes in after four o'clock in the UK. And that is all that matters. <laughs> Take everybody, stay safe, and goodbye. <laughs>